It was called Operation Augusta, an innocuous name for a police investigation that's raised many more questions than it ever answered. It began with Victoria Golia, a child groomed and raped while in care. She'd be 32 this year. She's been dead longer than she lived. She died and they will let it go. They will let it go. They're not sorry. They know what happened. How can they be sorry? No, no, they're not sorry. No, not in any way. The whole system needs to be changed. Since her granddaughter's death, Joan has refused to accept the official version. And she's right, those meant to protect her granddaughter did know what was happening. They knew Victoria was being raped. They knew other girls in care were being raped too. But the investigation triggered by Victoria's death was closed down. Its resources pulled, so the abuse carried on. Today, with the police whistleblower who exposed the failings next to her, the new official version was revealed. Our report has established that most of the children we considered were failed by Greater Manchester Police and Manchester City Council. The authorities knew that many were being subjected to the most profound abuse and exploitation, but did not protect them. This is a depressingly familiar picture seen in many other towns and cities across the country. Many other places and thousands more children. For years, the girls were dismissed as troublemakers, social workers and police who spoke out were ignored. The investigation in Manchester was one of the first. Officers identified dozens of victims and close to 100 potential suspects. But then it was stopped when senior officers decided to pull all its resources. This wasn't a mistake by senior police officers. This was a deliberate closing down of a live investigation because for whatever reason they couldn't be bothered. They left those kids to their own devices. They let the men continue to, ab ab to abuse children. They will not have stopped. For me, there should be accountability now. Maggie's the only person here today who's used the word cover-up. Do any of the rest of you think this is a cover-up? When I heard Maggie say that this had been abruptly closed, I wanted to know the reason why. Uh, and that's what I asked. Malcolm and Gary to find what, what was the reason for this being terminated so um, uh, abruptly. Um, and the records say it was a question of resources. Tonight there are calls for a new inquest into Victoria Agolia's death. The original verdict said there was no suggestion it should have been foreseen, even though her support workers knew a man had been injecting her with heroin. While police say there's now a new investigation. I want to apologise to all of those vulnerable children who were let down in 2004 when Greater Manchester Police did not thoroughly investigate the abhorrent offences that had been committed against them. I want to say that I'm personally disgusted that these children were not cared for and the awful abuse they suffered. I'm committed to doing all that we can to ensure that they receive the justice today that they were denied 15 years ago. She was only a child. She lost her mother. That was her only fault. It was wrong. Everybody's been wrong. And I loved her. <laughs> Well, today, Andy Burnham, the mayor of Greater Manchester, said that this case should have been a wake-up call, but instead the investigation was closed abruptly and that was wrong. The report published today does not name the police officers said to have been involved in making that decision, but this evening Channel 4 News can reveal that one of those senior police officers was Dave Thompson, who is now the chief constable of West Midlands Police, one of the biggest police forces in the country. He has confirmed that to us this evening, but he is also distancing himself from the decision making. In a statement, he says that he was a district commander with Greater Manchester Police at the time and not in charge of criminal investigations. He said he was never involved in the Operation Augusta investigation. He says that he acknowledges the report does identify him as having been at a meeting and having made the decision about resources. 
but he says that it wouldn't have been for a police officer of his role to make that kind of decision. He goes on to say uh, that he would not have made that decision with that kind of investigation, but he also apologises because he was working for Greater Manchester Police at that point in time for failings within the investigation. So Dave Thompson, Chief Constable of West Midlands Police, confirming to us this evening that he was involved in the report that was published today highlighting failings in this case. Claire Fallon reporting from Manchester. Thanks, John. Well, Nazir Afsal is the former Chief Crown Prosecutor for the North West of England and had responsibility for prosecutions, including those of the Rochdale grooming gang. He joins us now from Cardiff. Nazir Afsal, we've had Rotherham, we've had Rochdale, we've had Telford, Oxford, now the scale of the Manchester grooming scandal. Can this happen again? Is it happening again now? Undoubtedly. Uh, the decisions taken in Augusta in the early 2000s were a choice. Uh, you know, when people say resources were, you know, it was under-resourced, well, that's a choice. When you say it's a low priority, that's a choice. Uh, and so those who, who were in engaged in safeguarding children in the first decade of this century made a choice that children who were being sexually abused, being raped, uh, would not be protected by the system. Well, that uh, is um, extraordinary and ridiculous. But at the same time, uh, it has to be said that in the last, uh, whilst there was massive progress in the first half of the last decade, uh, Rochdale, you mentioned Rotherham and other, others, uh, we, we're slipping backwards. We're slipping backwards because uh, there are fewer police officers, there are fewer experts, fewer specialists, fewer people in child services, fewer prosecutors. And so um, I'm not as confident as I was four or five years ago that we are getting on top of this subject. And yes, we're getting uh, cases coming through the court uh, pretty much routinely. Uh, but the reality, of course, is that victims from 15 years ago didn't get justice. So the chances of you getting justice right now are as, as limited as they could be. Well, and what should happen to the people responsible for failing um, victims here? I mean, should they be charged with gross misconduct, misconduct in public office? What should happen to them? Well, that, I mean, obviously, I don't know the circumstances of the decision making. I've seen uh, something in the report that talks about uh, people saying that children should have uh, managed their own uh, behaviours. Uh, as if somehow the children were responsible uh, for what happened to them. It talks about uh, the perpetrators uh, being allowed to get on with it and then ultimately reoffending. Th those are those are terrible outcomes. And yes, there ought to be accountability. I'm very strongly in favour of people being held to account. But I have to put this in perspective. Greater Manchester is not a standalone. There would be probably 43 chief constables, 43 senior management teams up and down the country who would have similar similar cases who simply either turned a blind eye or decided it wasn't their priority. And so we would have a situation, if we held everybody to account, where hundreds of people would be held to account. And you also have to remember this. A few months ago, the Prime Minister said that dealing with or tackling child sexual abuse was like spaffing money up a wall. The reality is the police officers and chief police officers around the country agreed with him. They made a choice. They decided it was something they were not going to spend their money on. And as a result, hundreds, if not thousands of young people, particularly women, have been abused and continue to be abused. And offenders have been able to walk around the streets, not of Greater Manchester, of everywhere, mm. and be able to do so with impunity. And one of the reasons the report suggests, quoting an unnamed Greater Manchester police detective, is that, that, that the quote from the report, what had a massive input was the offending target group were predominantly Asian males, and we were told to try and get other ethnicities. In your view, how big a part did political correctness play in just this, this uh, investigation being dialed down? I mean, obviously, I wasn't around in Greater Manchester at the time, but when you read this and you realise that pretty much every offender that they were dealing with was from a, a British Pakistani or British Asian background, well, yes, the perception will be that something like political correctness or some issue around their ethnicity played a part. I've always said that ethnicity is an issue, it's not the issue. The issue is that victims, women and girls, have simply been allowed to suffer without being listened to and being left behind. That's the issue. 
issue, but the ethnicity of the perpetrators you cannot get away from, the disproportionately they have been involved in this type, this model of sexual abuse. But let's make this very clear. Today the UNS announced that there are three million people in this country who have been sexually abused as a children. Yeah. One in 20. The bigger issues is about how we deal with this going forward.